Let me start by saying that I have no history of any mental disorders, I have never done drugs, and I haven't been drinking. Also on my father's side of the family, we have a tradition that I've known about for most of my life, that every firstborn son has the initials JCM or JDM. Knowing this, I picked up my son's name a few years back and it's unique, one I've definitely never heard before. Let's move on. About a year ago when I was 21 years old, I shared an apartment with two female roommates, Kaya and Amber. It was late in the afternoon and I had just gotten off of work and was headed home. When I opened the front door, there was a little boy crouched on the floor that I'd never seen before. I closed the door and he ran up to me with a smile and hugged my legs. I said hello and he looked up and said hi. I asked him who he was here with and he said with you. I called out to Kaya and Amber thinking maybe they had to babysit a brother or nephew or something, but nobody was home, the place was empty. I asked who his mom was and he told me to stop being silly. Confused, I asked him what his name was and then my heart dropped. Daddy, it's me, Jergen. The same name I had picked out for my firstborn son. I'd never told anybody that name. Nobody. I asked him where his mom was and he got a really sad look on his face and said, She's gone. Suddenly a rush of pure dread filled my body and I fell to the floor and began to cry like a baby, head in hand, sobbing. I have absolutely no idea why. When I looked up, Jergen was gone and I felt completely devastated, like my entire world was falling down around me. I called out to him but there was nobody in the apartment anymore. I've never told anybody about that night, but I found this channel and felt like I should talk about it. If anybody knows what could have happened or has had a similar experience, please let me know. So my brother-in-law lost his parents within a few months of each other about three years ago. My nephew wasn't even six months old when they passed away, so he didn't get to see them much. Not long after their passing, my sister would hear my nephew on the baby monitor laughing in his room by himself, or his eyes would trail behind you as if though he was looking at someone else. Other weird things started happening around their house that they couldn't explain. They have some canvas pictures hanging on the wall in the hallway. One of them was hung completely upside down without any explanation. Another odd thing that happened around that time was even more out of place. They had a few cats and one morning they had found their grooming brush lying on the floor in the middle of the kitchen. Their black cat, like most, loved being brushed with one and comes running whenever someone takes it out, but it's actually kind of a chore because he always gets mats in his fluffy hair. When my sister picked up the brush, the black cat seemed scared and took off running. When they checked to see what was wrong with him, he seemed very spooked and his matted fur was gone, as if someone brushed the mats out. He's still freaked out by that brush. Now my nephew is three and he can say a lot more words. My sister tells me that he points to the room just off of their kitchen and says, Gaga's in there, mama. My family calls ghosts spirits, Gaga's. I don't know why, but he always says it's in that spot of the house. He also hates when my sister and her husband leave their bathroom door open. They have a bathroom that connects to their bedroom and they always sit in there while they watch TV at the end of the night and my nephew insists that they shut the door and acts really scared. He'll point to the dark bathroom and say, Guy in there, door, shut door. So that creeps them out of course and he still does it all the time. So one night my sister was the only one awake and she got up to use the bathroom and kept the door open. She heard someone laughing, and so she laughed back, assuming it was her husband, and turned to see what he was doing. She called his name a few times and realized he was sound asleep. She freaked out and tried to wake him up to ask him if he was just laughing, and he said no, and just went back to sleep. She even checked outside the window because the laugh was so clear and loud. She's been burning sage every day because she truly thinks they're being haunted. I'll post any updates if stuff keeps happening. This happened when I was a kid around 2005, when I was 8 or so. I lived in a medium-sized, middle-class home in central Florida that was built in the 80s. 
So when I was a kid, I was home with the only other person in the house, being my mom. We lived with my grandma and my younger sister, but they were out of the house when this happened. It was the middle of the day, and my mom and I were sitting on the bed in her room, talking about random things. I don't remember exactly what we were talking about, but I do distinctly remember my mom pausing in the middle of a sentence, and then asking me, Did you hear that? After a moment. I didn't notice anything, so I just said no, and we continued talking. Not too long after that, the phone rang. Now, at this point in time, there were only two phones in the house, one of which was my grandma's cell phone, which she always kept on her. My mom was always between cell phones because she had bad luck with technology and kept having service issues or breaking them in some fashion, these cheap flip phones. Anyways, the other phone was a landline home phone that was kept in the master bedroom, which was on the opposite side of the house from where my mom's room was. My mom got up to get the home phone, but by the time she got to it, it went to voicemail. She brought it back into the room, sat down, and listened to the message that was left. I watched her as she was listening to the voicemail, and I noticed she was becoming more and more visibly upset as it went on, to the point of crying at the end. This obviously freaked me out, and I repeatedly asked her what was wrong. In response, she played the voicemail back to me on speaker. At first, there was a static-type noise, but then I suddenly heard what sounded like a recording of us talking shortly before the phone rang. Now, this is where it gets freakier. When my mom paused and then asked me, Did you hear that? A completely different voice then said, Yeah, you heard me right. And then went back to static. At that point, I freaked out a bit and felt very uncomfortable. My mom pulled herself together enough to search around both inside and outside the house to see if she could find anything or anyone, but came up with nothing. She came back in and we just sat there trying to think about how that could have happened. In the end, it never happened again. My mom believed in the paranormal and thought it was some sort of malevolent spirit or demon. She even tried to record EVPs a few times, but I don't know if anything ever came of it. I still have no explanation for it to this day. I don't know much about the history of the house, not that it was that old to begin with, or anything that happened near it. Does anyone know why this might have happened? I joined the US Marine Corps in 2000, and by 2003 I was in Iraq. While in Iraq, we stopped at an RRP, a repair and replenish point, and dug in for the night. That night there was no moon, and couldn't see any bright stars in the sky, so it was ridiculously dark. You seriously couldn't see your hand in front of your face. I was sitting in my dug position, using NVG's night vision goggles, to keep an eye out for insurgents, when I heard the loudest and scariest scream coming from out in the darkness. Then it got closer, but it became clear that the scream was above our heads. There was something flying above us, or hovering, that every several minutes would scream in a loud screeching, frightening way. I can't even give it justice on how frightening this scream sounded. A couple of us heard it, but the weird thing is that not everyone that was awake could hear it. I tried to convince myself that it could have been a local bird or a type of screech owl, I even googled many different owl calls just to try and find something that sounded similar, with no luck. To this day, I have no idea what I heard. Someone told me that it could have been a banshee, but I truly don't know. Any ideas? Anyone who served in Iraq heard of anything similar? It's not evil or anything. I get the feeling it's a feminine spirit. I think it might be my boss's mom after she passed away is when activity really started happening. I've kept a journal on the weird things that happen. First time I remember something unexplainable happening was when my coworker and I were talking to each other from across the aisle, when right in front of us I saw a bottle knock off a shelf. Not like it slipped off, but it was like it was picked up and was dropped. My first instinct was looking at my coworker and asking her, Did you do that? When obviously she didn't as she was a good 15 feet away. We have this neat stack of square empty boxes and one day it just slipped. As if they were pushed out. 
We have it on camera too the other day that there was this very sketchy man in our store. We just made a big sale and he definitely saw all the cash we had put in the register. He was next in line about to be rung up after that sale. Our UPS man came in and he always just takes two seconds to drop off stuff at our store. The sketchy guy was stalling, taking his time while being rung up to take out his wallet and stuff. The UPS man was about to leave when he got a call on his phone and he answered it. While he was waiting for an answer, the sketchy guy kept looking back at him quickly, probably to see if he was leaving, but he left right before the UPS man hung up. I asked him, was it a telemarketer? Because he didn't say anything throughout the call, and he responds, no, it was just silent. Maybe it was our ghost protecting us. There's been a lot of knocking on doors in the store when no one is there, and a lot of products fall off of their packages or getting randomly knocked off of shelves or racks, and also my coworkers and I always see someone standing out of the corner of our eyes, and we'll often feel someone is walking or running up behind us. I personally sometimes even hear a woman's voice saying stuff that I can't quite make out. I've had many experiences I consider to be paranormal, but I'm reasonable and open to the idea that the vast majority of those were tricks of light or my mind playing tricks on me. Most of them, realistically, could have a very normal explanation, but this is not one of them, and it's the one experience I swear that is not human, it was not happy, and it was not playing nice. In the summer of 2015, my friends, my girlfriend, and I spent a week at one of my friends' house. She lives on the shores of the Isle of Arran, in a house that was half modern, and the other half had been there for over a century. Her house was directly on the beach. I've always considered myself super spiritually sensitive. I usually get vibes, warnings, or whatever as soon as I enter somewhere occupied. When I entered the house, I was unsettled but I had to pee incredibly bad and ran upstairs to use the bathroom. I passed a room and saw what I thought was my friend in the nude, but we're close and I really needed to pee so I just rushed to the bathroom, paying no mind. Came out into the room where my friend was, empty, and I could hear that everyone was downstairs, but I saw a female figure with long dark hair clear as day. Dismissed it to be honest. It isn't rare for me to have sightings, although they're hardly ever that clear. Still, it wasn't anything to worry about, right? My friend slept in that room that night, and she was supposed to sleep there for the whole week. The house was gorgeous and pretty luxurious, every room was great, but after the first night my friend refused to sleep in that room and took the sofa instead. She said she saw a long-haired woman sat in the chair across from the bed, twice. Almost every time I passed that room, I saw the same thing. Sometimes the figure would be sat in the chair, other times standing before the dresser, sometimes looking out the window. The room my girlfriend and I were sleeping in shared a wall with that room and drawers could be heard opening and closing. I'd hear heavy sighs and thuds. This woman soon appeared all over the house. She'd peer around corners. She'd show herself to almost every visitor, but it was merely bumps in the night or apparitions. But one night, something happened that completely secured my belief in the paranormal. My girlfriend and I shared a bed and we were having a little pillow talk at around 1am. Something catches my eye in the dark and I look up. At the window, clear as day, the woman has stood there. Her mouth is gaping and her lower half is a blur. My girlfriend is still talking as I see this creature approach. The woman leaps up, shrieks as she flies maybe a meter above our heads. My girlfriend, who was now aware of our visitor, and I both see her zoom above us, out of the door, and head towards the room. There's another cry, a sob and a loud bang on the shared wall. Both sounds she made sound utterly horrified, like someone had been delivering devastating news. Not horrified as in scared, but like a devastating amount of pain, like an insane amount of sadness. The apparition was clearly visible to me for about 15 seconds straight. This wasn't a glance or a corner of the eye trick. I looked directly at her. I watched her run at us. I watched her fly above our heads. I watched her zoom out of the room and I heard her scream. 
My girlfriend and my friends all saw her, but only my girlfriend and I heard her scream and saw her in a more monstrous way. In fact, the only one unaffected was the host. She argued that there wasn't even as much as bumps in the night there, but the rest of my friends all had several experiences during the week we had stayed there. I'm not sure if this is relevant or not, but the host, the owner of the haunted house, turned out to be abusing her boyfriend in pretty much every way imaginable, and she was the only one never to cross paths with the screaming woman. We cut off contact with her maybe four months after this trip, after we had found out how she had been treating her boyfriend. Regardless, this was by far my most clear experience. I couldn't stop thinking about it, and I still can barely get it out of my head. It was absolutely insane. I'd be happy to answer any questions or give any more information that I could remember to help figure out what this was. She was horribly sad, she was horribly angry, and I sincerely believe she meant us harm. Supposedly there is a haunted ghost town within an hour's drive and so after one night of libatious excess, a few buddies and I decided to make a trip to see the ghost train that goes through this bunked town precisely 12.30am every night. We get to the town hastily, barely pulling up to the railroad crossing at 12.29am and stop the car. Sure enough, the crossing arms go down, but no train is in sight. We sit for a solid five minutes at least before the arms go up. Now, I'm extremely skeptical of there being a ghost train, especially since there was an SUV with its headlamps turned on less than a mile from the crossing, parked next to the tracks. Supposedly, it had been increasingly popular to go park by the tracks and watch the ghost train, but I think it may be that it was a railroad worker testing the crossing arms. Supposedly, the ghost train goes through every night and putting somebody on watch every night seems unlikely, so maybe it was another onlooker, it's hard to say. The town in question is rumored to have been host to cult rituals and gruesome child murders in the late 1800s to the early 20th century, according to multiple stories from various news sources at least. The town is now, as far as I know, abandoned, except for supposedly a lone landowner who is also caretaker on most of the land in town, the main road through a paved country road, hence the fancy crossing arms, although there is plenty of unarmed crossings in the area, mostly farmland. Still, one of the most unreal things I had ever seen was the lights, almost like Christmas lights on a large cottonwood tree. A big bunch of dim white lights reflected dully off the back brush alongside the road. Perhaps none were bigger than a softball. We didn't notice these lights until we were out of the car and on our way to explore old buildings. Curiously, we crept carefully down into the ditch until we could reach out and touch the leaves. The lights didn't get any more bright as we got closer, just a lame glow from nowhere. Finally, we were close enough to inspect the glowing mysteries. All were rounded in shape, yet impossible had been shown from afar. With the intrigue of casting shadow puppets, no hand could narrow out a projection from where the lights were cast. I wanted to believe that maybe a neighboring house had Christmas lights up, or at least a yard light projector to make a couple platoons worth orbs of lights. But nothing would block the light. There was no bulbs in the tree at all. It was seemingly just a regular tree. The leaves would slowly move in the wind, yet the lights seemed to stay in the same place, yet only reflecting when the leaves were in just the right spot. We chickened out and left without exploring any buildings. Something just felt odd and we decided that maybe a car was coming and we should get moving. Had a light just come on inside the living room window of that strange looking corner house where a for sale sign was planted square to the road. Back home, further research indicated that crossways from the exact location of these tree lights, there is a gateway to hell at the site of an old church that supposedly was the place of cult rituals which burned down in the 50s or 60s. A daytime exploration was short and luckily uneventful, but extremely creepy. As I entered the town, a minivan with two women in the front seat passed by me while I was going about 20 miles per hour. These women very eerily kept their gaze straight forward as I looked over at them passing me in a freaking minivan nonetheless. Very strange how stone cold and solid their heads were fixed in that car. 
so I stupidly pretended like I was just driving through as I looked around for the place I had in mind, and then I came back past that corner house. Never before have I ever seen children so jovially playing Ring Around the Rosie. They were in the front yard of that house for sale. I was creeped out but kept a little curiosity to explore an old farmstead on foot. A half a mile down the road from the light tree, I stopped at a big abandoned looking building, rumored to have been the train depot before the tracks were rerouted. This was approximately one-fourth mile from where the tracks lie now. The old depot was eerily placed on the side of a big slough with cattails and standing water, and this is where I got hashtag spooked. My first account. I walked around the back of the depot, towards an old livestock stall, and decided to turn around and leave the same way I came. Without walking behind the property for even five whole minutes because everything just felt too creepy. Old, decrepit wood buildings that weren't worth exploring for fear that they may cave in on top of a person, and possibly a hint of impending doom and anxiety. So I decided to turn back, thinking, what am I doing out here anyways? Then, plain as day, I saw a dead bird on the ground. It looked like it had been there for a long, long time. Not even to attract a fly, it was so rotten and sun-dried. Its wings were mostly featherless and grayish, and they stretched up towards the sky, making a V-shape. Certainly, most anyone would have noticed it on the way back around, yet it had seemed to appear out of nowhere. Surely it was picture-worthy, but only after doubting its existence for the split second walking past it. And of course, when I was done gawking at the stupid dead animal carcass, the local crazy guy showed up out of nowhere on a four-wheeler with a shotgun holstered to get me moving along. From when I was much younger, my older sister would always tell me that she had been haunted from a young age, for as long as she could remember. Now, I was an easily frightened child, so I was already scared out of my mind from the numerous stories she had to tell me, but what I experienced staying at her place still haunts me. It's not like one major event, but it's the buildup of multiple occurrences. To start off, there was a red flag that immediately caught my attention whenever I entered her home for the first couple of times. For the first couple of visits, I would notice she would get more and more religious decor and pieces placed around the house, photos of Jesus, crosses, and that kind of stuff, you know. She had a Bible in practically every room, and when I asked her why, her first response was, so he leaves me alone. At this point, I thought she was messing with me or just trying to rile me up, knowing what pushed my buttons, but she had this level of intensity in her voice that I couldn't even begin to try and recreate, like she wasn't messing around. It honestly shook me to my core, because of this, even though I'm not even a religious person, I would sleep with the Bible under my pillow every night when I stayed at her place. She practically forced me to anyways. Fast forward a couple of years, I don't stay over and for good reason, but now she's got a guard dog, so I figure it all is well. This dog is no pushover, he is a large and quite beefy German Shepherd. In fact, he was part of the canine unit as my sister's ex-boyfriend was a police officer, so I knew this dog wasn't afraid of much. Now, I'm over one night dog-sitting for her as she's out of state for a week, and although I am very uncomfortable because of my experiences in the house, I thought I'd throw my sister a bone and cover this for her. That turned out to be one of the first mistakes I could have made. The dog and I are sitting on the couch watching TV in the living room. Where I was sitting, you could see the far end of the hallway. That same hallway has multiple doors on both sides, but I hate having them open, so I close them all before I do anything. Even though I should have felt somewhat safer, I just didn't. I would sit on the couch just petting the dog trying to calm myself, and I would get an overwhelming sense of danger, as if I shouldn't be in the house under any circumstance. The hallway has no light on, and I'm just getting the feeling I'm being watched. I figured it was my mind just giving me excuses to be afraid, but I felt like something was preying on me waiting for me to make a wrong move. Out of nowhere, the dog jumps off of the couch and immediately goes full attack mode, pointing towards the hallway looking straight down it. This dog is going so ballistic, he's practically foaming at the mouth, barking and growling and snarling into the dark, obviously looking at something that I couldn't see. But out of nowhere, he gets quiet and just stares, 
as if whatever he was looking at was gone. Then I was hit with one of the worst feelings that I'm sure others have experienced as well. You know that feeling of intense anticipation? The room is still, it's completely quiet and you're just waiting for something to happen. That's what I was doing. I felt the hairs of my arms and neck stand up and I just stone-faced stared into the dark, not wanting to look away, fearing that as soon as I did it would be all over. My whole body tingled with anticipation and it felt like the longest 10 seconds of my life. As I sit in silence, the door at the end of the hallway slowly creaks. Not like the door is being opened, but like someone is slightly pushing their weight on it. But this happened multiple times in a short time frame within the span of another 5 seconds. Because it was so quiet, the noise stood out to me and made it all the more intense. Normally, I would brush it off as the wind or the house being generally unstable, but the dog made it a dead giveaway that something wasn't right. The next encounter was much more brief but happened the very next day. After that moment in that night, I kept all the lights on throughout the halls and refused to turn them off. I also didn't want to sleep or lay in the living room anymore because, to be frank, I practically crapped myself. At this point in time, it's probably dusk, maybe around 6pm, so it wasn't too dark around the house where the lights weren't on. Because of this, I figured it was no big deal. The dog is trailing behind me and I make my way into my sister's room. I turned around halfway into the room because I realized I didn't hear the tapping of the dog's claws on the floor, meaning he stopped following me. This fierce police dog showed fear that I'd never seen present in another animal before. The dog stopped dead in its tracks where the door frame met the floor and refused to enter the room. He would sit there and whine and bark in my direction. As long as the lights were off, he would not step one paw into that room. In this moment, I'm frozen with fear. There was something in this room with me, and I could immediately feel the danger I was in. I felt so uneasy to the point I thought I was going to vomit. I went to walk toward the door to leave the room and the door immediately slammed shut in front of me. For a solid few seconds I was frozen and in shock. I thought this stuff only happened in movies. Not even a few seconds after the door slams, I hear the heavy pitter-patter of bare feet running towards my direction from across the room where the bedroom's bathroom was. I didn't bother to look. I didn't want to. With tears welling in my eyes, I jumped for the doorknob, ripped the door open, picked up that big pup with all my might, and ran straight for the front door. I told my sister I'd continue the dog sitting at my house, and then refused to step foot in that building ever again. It has been years since I've been to that house, and I'm never going back. When my best friend and I were young, we had an imaginary friend that I named Joey. I could see, talk, and hear them. This went on from about ages two to four. I was an only child and my parents did not want another kid at all and my mom was going through stages of menopause as she was 44. I drew a picture of her when I was three years old of her pregnant. My parents were so worried because they did not want another child and worried I was lonely because I drew her like this. But one day while me and my mom were at the store, she fell ill and said she needed to go home. I told her it was because she was going to have a baby. She literally enough, she took a test and was pregnant. My parents were then planning on naming my brother Dominic or Nicholas, but when he was born my dad said he looked like a Joey, which they asked me if it was okay if they named him Joey, to which I apparently of course said yes. I never saw my imaginary friend ever again after that. Now jump to elementary school. I freaked out one day when I came home from dinner with my family and felt like something was wrong with our house. I sprinted upstairs and surely enough, a black cat was in our house, neighbor's cat. Now in high school, I got a Saab convertible for my first car. Every single time I rode in my car, I felt that there was something off, that I didn't want it, and that I felt like it was really not mine. Which is crazy, we bought the car for so cheap and in perfect condition. I felt like I was just being a brat, but I really felt that something was off about the car and it never felt like it was mine. I crashed the car and had to get rid of it only after about a year of having it. Then college. I moved into an apartment with two girls into this nice apartment in the city I go to school in. We all decided that we wanted to live there again for another year. 
As I was about to sign the lease to say we would live there for another year, I looked at my roommate and said, For some reason something is telling me we are not going to live here for much longer. I feel that we are leaving soon. My roommate looked at me like I was crazy. It was the middle of the school year and we still had to live through already assigned year lease. About a few weeks later we were forced to move into our apartment due to black mold. My grandmother was not doing the best but still okay. I went to visit her in New York, but as I was saying goodbye, I was the last one in her room, my family went outside. I felt this eerie sensation and was almost scared. I felt like she looked so pale, almost hollow, and close to death. She held on so tight that it slightly scared me, that she knew also what was happening. I went into the car with my family and didn't tell my mom what I experienced because I felt it was just so uncomfortable. I felt that I knew that was it, the last time I would see my grandma when she was herself. That was the last I saw her in her house while she was still able to comprehend things. She felt very ill with dementia and other illnesses and was in a home the last time I saw her, and she died soon after. At this point in my life I had begun to try listening to more of what I was feeling so now I moved into a new apartment. I felt that there was something off there as well. However, this time I tried to listen more. I began to think about a fire in the apartment. I felt like I was going to set the apartment on fire. But thinking this made me go crazy, so I began to research to see if there was any fires previously on the property because maybe I was feeling this from previous energy there. But no fires were there. I heard that there was a huge fire next door. I then began to think that maybe this was the fire I was thinking of, but I knew in my heart it was not so, and I scratched that idea. Then I thought maybe that it would be in the far future, but again, I thought no, there will be a fire. I became so paranoid uh, I would take out plugs, check the oven and stove several times a day. Then one day I was cooking and started a huge grease fire that burned the ceiling, and ever since then I don't feel that there will be a fire there. There are so many other occurrences, but I have never had a premonition that did not come true. Maybe sometimes thinking of who was calling me, which ended up not being them, but major life event ones that I began to think of out of nowhere always came true. Does anyone else have these types of premonitions also? I need advice. So this has been nothing more than a mild annoyance for years. I never really reached out, but I thought I should throw it out there since it might be a bit interesting to hear what you guys think it could be. When I was fairly young, I think maybe around 10 years old or so, I was in the bathroom at my house and I was finishing up. I heard a noise that sounded like it was coming from the mirror. Reflexively, I looked and saw, only in the mirror, in broad daylight, a figure rising up bent over forwards and with an incredibly long torso that made it seem like it just kept rising. Its arms, in stark contrast to the somewhat broad but skinny torso, were like twigs, and it looked like it had a skin-tight spine on its back, almost like the flap on some eels. The noise didn't stop either. You've heard the sound of a plane engine just before it takes off, right? Imagine that, but it sounds like something is making the sound by breathing out. The noise continued for about another few seconds of me being in shock until I hightailed it, noping out from washing my hands into the room my mother was in and slammed the door behind me. The noise did actually stop as I looked away and was replaced by heavy footsteps which were so close to me I could tell it wasn't breathing making the sound because if it breathed I would have felt it. It was a very short dash to the room, under a second, and the experience over in around six seconds or so but I swear if you were to ask me how long it felt, I would have said it felt like a whole few minutes. I'm no Matthew Patrick, but I'd guess by the sound of the footsteps, if it were a person, they'd have to be well over 200 pounds and stomping. When I opened the door, they instantly stopped, and as I shut the door, I saw the light in the hall, which was only about the size of a closet, was flicked off. But on the way there, being young, I turned the light on in a panic, hoping that it would stop. Obviously not, thinking back on it, because it showed up right around the time that the light was coming in through the window, and yes, there was a window in our downstairs bathroom, I've always wondered whose idea it was. To sum up the rest of the day, I stuck around people constantly, 
and eventually thought back on the beginning of the day, when it was half dark out, I'd gotten out of my bed in the upper floor and glimpsed downstairs. A dark figure going from out of sight on the right to out of sight on the left, so quickly I couldn't even make out its shape. I thought it was just weird lighting when I'd seen that a second time on the same floor going left to right while I was downstairs this time. I thought back to it and it seemed like the same thing considering the speed I'd heard it moving at. I also heard the footsteps on the sink and then the counter the sink was on in that order before the footsteps so I pretty much heard it jump onto the sink and off like it came out of the mirror and the dark coloration of it. It seems to be a polymorph to some degree because over time after that I'd seen it every now and again and it had once appeared to be my shadow in the floor below me for a moment before reshaping to a shadow of the shape I'd seen with a visibly empty area that looked like a digestive system and it darted away. The head almost looked like that one SCP that appeared behind doors and caused people irrational fear of it. I know that I sound like I'm amalgamating a bunch of dumb horror tropes, but seriously, this is what my very vivid memories tell me. I also recall the head particularly well because I would often glimpse it from behind a door, peeking, and would snap its head out of sight very quickly when I looked at it head on, but it would wait until I did or until I came very close. I've grown very used to it by now, just being annoyed when it knocks over an object near the mirror, lifting an arm into view in objection to the strange noises I make. That's why I called it passive aggressive. It's very prone to slapping objects, usually ones near a mirror if it's in view. When I annoy it, which is hard not to do so being an Aspie and with an attention deficit disorder, and oh yeah, that's another reason to take my word, I have Asperger's syndrome and none of that balding dude in my mom's basement self-diagnosing stuff. It's a medical diagnosis I got after a long while of suspicions of ASD from my family. I've actually had quite a number of run-ins with weird creatures like this, so nothing really surprises me by now, but this thing pulled exactly that off a few nights ago. I was trying to get to sleep with this channel on my TV that had just played nature sounds, and I can already tell it's him without opening my eyes when I feel like I'm being watched. I say him because it seems like a male, but I don't know though, I could be wrong. Anyways, I open my eyes and see its head swing back into the bathroom where I first saw it, the nearly square hallway visible with my door open. So without even thinking about it, I spoke up in a last-ditch effort to spare some grief, being an insomniac already, so I say out loud, You know, if you like, you can just eat my scaredness, why don't you? I could just give you my word that I'll play Soma this week. My new computer can handle the graphics and it's bound to be better than you trying because, really, you aren't scary anymore. You're just annoying silhouette that follows all the TV tropes and horror movie cliches. And it surprised me when that vibe of eyes on me let up, and nothing followed up that night. Now, as it comes close to seven days since that's happened, it seems to be getting annoyed because I'm just lazy. And that's pretty much it. I was wondering if anyone knew anything about this. I don't mind it being here, but if you guys know something that might get it to tone all this crap down a little... That'd be nice. And I've even caught it off guard and stumbled into it without meaning to, and I felt nothing. It just wasn't there as soon as that happened. So there's that. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, or let's read official and give and receive feedback from the community and maybe even hear it featured here on the channel. And grab early access to all future narrations for just $1 a month on Patreon, and maybe even pick up some Let's Read merch on Spreadshirt. Links in the bio. Thanks so much, friends, and I'll see you again soon.